Hi everyone, my name is Morgan and this is my joy journal day six. I can't uh, show the number on one hand anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, so today I am so tired. Last night I stayed up extremely late with Eleanor and Eleanor's sister and it was just chaotic. We went to bed at like 1.30 and then woke up at 7 because the next day I was helping Eleanor build a set for a play that uh, we will be in. So yeah, I am exhausted and I took a shower and that's kind of why my hair is a little ratty and messy looking right now. Um, but yeah, it was fun, but I am so tired. <laughs> and uh, on to the thing that brought me joy today. It is this book right here. The original Fanny Farmer 1896 cookbook from the Boston Cooking School. So this is a reprint of a cookbook from 1896. And... It's so insanely detailed, but also some of the recipes are super weird <laughs> and disgusting. <laughs> some of them sound good, but most of them are not so great, let's just say. <laughs> so the first recipe that I will be showing you is called Oyster omelet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I sometimes I like, well, I like oysters, but the idea of oysters kind of grosses me out sometimes. And I wouldn't trust oysters from 1896. <laughs> so oyster omelet. Mix and cook plain omelet. Fold in one pint oysters. That's so many. There's only four eggs in that recipe. Four eggs, but yet a whole pint of oysters? <laughs> oh no. Fold in one pint oysters, parboiled, drained from their liquor, and cut in halves. Turn on platter and pour around thin white sauce. And the thin white sauce is a recipe that I assume they had earlier in the book. A lot of these recipes will refer to other recipes like, oh, use white sauce number one or use blah, blah, blah number two. Like they will refer back to previous recipes and sauces and stuff that they have in the book. So I have no idea what thin white sauce is, but I'm a little bit afraid to find out. <laughs> the second recipe I will be showing you is fried mushes. <laughs> I don't know what mushes is, but... <laughs> Mush left over from breakfast may be packed and greased one pound baking powder box and covered which will prevent crust from forming. The next morning, remove from box, slice thinly, dip in flour and saute. Huh. That That's concerning. <laughs> I don't like that they're just leaving the mush out and it congeals into like a bread thing that they then slice and then they serve them like French toast sticks. <laughs> That's so odd. Like I, I'm, s I'm just fascinated by this. I, I love this book. I have spent hours just paging through this book because sometimes there are really delicious sounding recipes, like especially in like the desserts part, you know, but some of these recipes are just so weird. <laughs> it is 
more of a modern thing to separate your sweet foods from your savory foods. Back then, like when this book was made, um, it would have been more common to incorporate sweet and savory into a single meal or a single dish. Um, so I think that is an important context to get for this book because um, like you might think, oh my gosh, that is such a weird recipe because it's like a dinner recipe, but they ask, like tell you to put a bunch of sugar in it. Like that's so weird, but it's just how they did it back then. They weren't accustomed to like really savory meals. And then afterwards you get like a really sweet dessert. Uh, it's just, that's how they did it back then. <laughs> All right. So fried mushes. Why is it mushes plural? <laughs> like, wouldn't it just be fried mush? Like, that's really odd to me. Oh my gosh, okay. So, the next recipe that I will be showing you is water toast. This one right here at the bottom. Oh boy, this one, this is a lot. This is, just just listen to this, because I cannot fathom trying to eat this. <laughs> Dip slices of dry toast quickly in boiling salted water, allowing one half teaspoon salt to one cup boiling water. Spread slices with butter and serve at once. These people were eating salty, soggy toast with butter. <laughs> like, they're eating soggy toast with butter on top. I just, that is just so hilarious to me. Like, I, I love, I love it. This, it's fascinating. <laughs> I, I cannot believe, I would love to I mean, honestly, maybe in a, a next video I can try out some of these recipes, like water toast. <laughs> maybe not that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe in a, another video I can try some of these recipes because I've actually been wanting to do that for a while because some of them look really interesting and it kind of gives you an inspiration that is, comes from such a different source. Like it feels so different from how we cook now. Like, um, so I think it would kind of provide me with maybe a bit of cooking inspiration, something new, even though it is old and not new, but it's new to me. <laughs> the next thing I have, which also has oysters in it, and you already know my opinions on oysters. <laughs> is oyster toast. Mm. <laughs> All right, the recipe for oyster toast. Serve broiled oysters on small pieces of milk toast. Sprinkle with finely chopped celery. Mmm. What a delicious meal. I really hope they weren't eating that for breakfast. <laughs> I feel like that would be more of like a snack. It's just so savory. I personally, I kind of like a mix of savory and sweet for breakfast. So I don't know how I would feel about that one. Like it would probably be so salty and like such an odd taste in the morning. So I can't imagine that could have been a breakfast, but I am so curious. <laughs> So uh, yeah, those are some of the weirdest recipes I found in the book. Now I will be finding some recipes that sound pretty good. All right, I lied. I have one more gross recipe, and I think you will agree with me that this one definitely needed to be included. It is clam water. And yes, clams. I have mentioned oysters, and now this is the third recipe with some sort of mollusk, but please listen to this one. This is just ridiculous. I cannot believe this was a thing. 
Ahem. Clam water. Wash and scrub one and one half dozen clams. So many clams. Cook in covered kettle with three tablespoons water until shells open. Remove clams. Strain liquor through double cheesecloth. Serve hot or as a frappe. A frappe. An oyster water frappe. Excuse me? You mean to tell me you want a clam water slushy, basically? Okay. Yeah. Try asking for one of those next time you go to Starbucks. I'm sure that they will just love that. <laughs> All right, now I will actually try to find a good recipe from this book. All right, so uh, there are quite a few good recipes in this book. Uh, it does take a little bit of looking to find them sometimes, um, but the dessert section in this book is very interesting. There are a lot of recipes for different frozen desserts, which is very interesting considering they didn't have refrigerators or freezers. And they actually include the instructions for how to freeze these frozen desserts. It is fascinating. Basically, they say like you use snow or ice, whichever is more readily available, and you keep it cold with a bunch of rock salt and put that in a container and then basically put your frozen dessert in the container with the ice and slowly it'll be frozen. <laughs> and it is just so fascinating that um, they described like how to freeze desserts. Like I think it's so cool that they included that. And of course, not that long after, we invented refrigerators and freezers. And so this process was made even easier. So these are things that honestly, any of you at home could probably make yourself because you probably have a freezer. There are a few recipes for like flavored ice. Like they have lemon ice, orange ice, raspberry ice, strawberry ice, but there is one here that is a little confusing to me, and you will see why. <laughs> Pomegranate ice. Same as orange ice made from blood oranges. So it is called pomegranate ice, but it is in fact made from blood oranges. <laughs> why don't they just call it blood orange ice? <laughs> Like, why did they have to like lie about it and call it pomegranate? Like, that's so odd to me. Um, yeah. There are also recipes for different sherbets and frappes and sorbets. And there's like banana ice cream, caramel ice cream, macaroon ice cream. What is interesting about the macaroon recipes is that they don't just take coconut <laughs> and put it in the recipe and call it a macaroon because like, oh, well, macaroons have coconut in it, so it's like a macaroon, so we'll call it macaroon whatever. They literally just grate up macaroons and put it in these recipes instead of just getting coconut. <laughs> And I'm very curious as to why. It makes me wonder, like, maybe the macaroons weren't super accessible. Maybe coconut just wasn't that common. And so because of that, they had to use the only way that they had to get coconut, which was macaroons, probably. Um, that is my personal guess. I have no idea if I'm correct or not, so please don't. Uh, correct me on that because I'm I'm sure I'm wrong <laughs> um, but yeah I think it's fascinating that they call for macaroons in recipes and not just coconut um, 
yeah, they have baked Alaska, Neapolitan ice cream, frozen puddings, angel food, different sauces, parfaits. Oh, they look so delicious. Um, and yeah, I think it is, I think this book is just fascinating. And as much as I would like to make fun of these recipes, because some of them are quite funny and gross sounding to me, uh, I do like to remember that I don't exactly know the context of all of this, um, and it's possible that names for things have changed, or just public opinion of these things has changed. Like I mentioned earlier about including sweet uh, foods with savory and like combining it into single dishes. Um, that's just not a thing we do nowadays. And so because of that, I might perceive some of these recipes as gross or weird when they really aren't. It's just a cultural difference. There are probably a lot of recipes in here that I just don't have the cultural context for. And so it's kind of fun to look at it through like an interesting lens of like looking back on the past. But at the same time, this was a cookbook from the Boston Cooking School. So this was seen as really valuable advice. And there are some very interesting resources in here, including instructions on a full course dinner. Now, I will give you a minute to guess how many courses are in a full course dinner. Three? Five? No. Twelve. <laughs> it is so incredibly detailed. And this also includes recipes for Thanksgiving and Christmas, but it says like first course, second course, third course, like what kinds of dishes are acceptable? Like something interesting, like see sixth course, Entree, made of light meat or fish. Like it tells you what would be acceptable for each course, which I think is very interesting. Tenth course, dessert, usually cold. Eleventh uh, course, frozen dessert and fancy cakes. Bonbons are passed after this course. Um, I think that is so interesting to be able to look at a resource like this because it might be fun to laugh at it, but there's a lot of really interesting and valuable information in this book. And it, they have like menus and how to like cut up different cuts of meat and how to do all these different things that a normal cookbook probably wouldn't tell you. And it's fascinating. And another fun thing about this book is they have all of these original advertisements in the back of the book, which are so cool. I like this one right here. It says, no housekeeper need have to apologize for her kitchen. A well-enforced rule of order and ivory soap will make it an attractive and appetizing spot. <laughs> So that is obviously an ad for Ivory Soap by Procter & Gamble, um, but just fascinating to get to look at all these old ads, and it's so cool, and I really enjoy looking at the ads um, for multiple reasons, but it's specifically really interesting to look through and see what brands I still recognize that are still around, um, and there are many of them. like. There was just an ad for ivory soap from 1896. How cool is that? So I am just very fascinated and joyful today about having this interesting resource and look into history. So um, yeah, thank you for watching and thank you for being here. Bye.